MAGA has had a busy week. We'll get to the Trump trial in a bit, but first, let's look at what Marjorie Taylor Greene is up to. MTG has been threatening to oust House Speaker Mike Johnson if he moves ahead on Ukraine aid, and this week her buddy Thomas Massey joined in on the fun. Mike Johnson responded by rolling his eyes and ignoring the tantrum, but it only made the tantrum worse. Marge then filed amendments to require anyone who votes for the bill to join the Ukrainian military, and another one that added funding for space lasers on the southern border. That girl loves her some space lasers, doesn't she? Then Jared Moskowitz responded with his own amendment that would name her as Vladimir Putin's special envoy to the United States Congress. And we have to ask ourselves, are we okay with our tax dollars being used on this kind of pettiness? And the answer is, yeah, it's fun to watch. Go ahead. But Marge wasn't done yet. You see, Marjorie Taylor Greene has been on a crusade for Lake and Riley, the nursing student that was killed by an undocumented immigrant. She handed out pins with her name at the State of the Union. She mentions her all the time in speeches. Basically, she spends a lot of time thinking and talking about Lake and Riley's story, which is why this was so weird. Are you familiar with Lake and Riley? Uh, uh, I am uh, familiar with the case. And you should have deported her so that she could be alive today. Her parents would have appreciated that. So Mayorkas didn't do his duty by deporting an American citizen? Honey, there's no port to deport to. This was her port. But if we can deport American citizens now, could we start with you? Maybe we could trade you for someone who doesn't use dead women as political props. Speaking of Alejandro Mayorkas, after the House spent months prepping articles of impeachment against him, Marge and her little buddies walked those articles over to the Senate where the senators promptly wiped their ass with them. Marge is said to currently be rage crossfitting at the gym till her neck veins burst. Oh man, has it been a brutal week for sanity in courtrooms as jury selection in Trump's hush money case progressed. Real voir dire and headlight stuff. One juror was dismissed after every major news outlet competed to see who could get closest to doxing the jurors. I'm told this nameless juror is five foot six, has brown eyes, works the 5 p.m. shift at the Shoney's on 54th Street every Thursday, and once engraved the name Larry P. Molman on his personal watch. Guys, it's bad enough that these people are gonna have to hear about Trump's penis for the next several weeks. Can we at least not get them killed? And speaking of the penis's owner, Donald Trump is mad because he's under another gag order, which he has reportedly violated seven times. So weird how he keeps ending up under gag orders. I wonder what the common denominator is there. But should he be under that gag order? Let's take a look at the evidence. Just this week, it was reported that an illegal alien, and, and you just look at this, what's happening. It's the Battle of Gettysburg, what an unbelievable, I mean, it was so much and so interesting and so vicious and horrible and so beautiful in so many different ways. It, it represented such a big, portion of the success of this country. Gettysburg, wow. Gettysburg was really less of a wow with more of a yikes, Don Don. <laughs> but I think the judge is wrong here about the gag order in that it doesn't go nearly far enough. It should cover all speech, impromptu history lessons, politics, anything about women, all of it, ban all of it. The fact is this man is losing it. Do we really want a president with dementia? I mean, of course, there was Ronald Reagan, but at least he had throat goat Nancy Reagan to run things while he battled his brain stopping up. What are we going to do if Melania is running the ship? Would all foreign policy be written on jackets? Would it be illegal to hold your wife's hand in public? Would IVF be the only legal way to get pregnant? It's going to be a mess. But when he's not ranting, it's night-night time. That's right, Trump reportedly fell asleep a couple of times during his trial this week. And his lawyer, Alina Haba, had a bizarre reason why. President Trump, you know, he reads a lot. Here's my question. What the fuck is he reading that's putting him to sleep? Because I read the news all day, every day, and none of it is calming me down. I haven't read anything relaxing since Tiger Beat back in middle school. Let's go to the library, Alina, and you can show me what to check out. Now, Trump being in court all the time is problematic for two reasons. One, because it's running up quite the legal tab, and two, because he has better things to do. Luckily, he's found a new way to help pay legal bills by asking down-ballot candidates to pay him 5% every time they use his name and likeness in their campaign ads. <laughs> you silly goose. No one wants to be associated with you in a campaign ad. In terms of having better things to do, Trump is worried that he might not get to see his son graduate. And his buddy Charlie Kirk has some great advice for him. I, I think he should just defy the order and uh, go to Barron's graduation. Get arrested. This is just more indictments. Uh, as if uh, you're already not facing 700 years in federal prison. 
I agree with you, Charles. Donald, do some more crimes. Get arrested. Get thrown in jail. Get yourself a really long jail sentence. Spend the rest of your life in there. That'll show them. All right, one more before we move on to other stuff. The prank duo, The Good Liars, went to a MAGA event to read from the Trump Bible, which we can only assume says things like, Thou shalt commit adultery, or You shall not take Trump's name in vain, that's what God's name is for, or You shall bear false witness against your neighbor, be they at Linthen or from wherever Barack Obama is from. Apparently, ten new commandments will be exclusively available in the Trump Bible too. the second term. After an attack by Iran that is about as unprecedented as your neighbor taking a swing at you after you shit on their lawn, Biden warned Israel that the U.S. would not support a counterattack on Iran. This statement was followed by an extremely exaggerated wink and a sudden uptick in searches for synonyms for counterattack in Israel. James Comer isn't gonna pull a Taylor Swift and have his good stuff leaked early. Nope, he's playing coy and keeping a lid on things. Well, what is the crime that you want to impeach Joe Biden for and keep this nonsense going? Well, Why? When, well, well, what is the crime? Tell America right now. You well, can you're, have the you're my about time. to find out. What very is soon. the crime? You're about to find out. Name very it. Soon. Ooh, I can't wait. I heard he's going to tell us right after Trump announces his health care plan. Carrie Lake suggested that her supporters arm themselves during the coming election. We are going to put on the armor of God. And maybe strap on a Glock on the side of us just in case. Carrie, you seem to have a lot of pent up aggressive energy. May I suggest a different kind of strap on? Matthew 2535 says, For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. But Ron DeSantis 2024 says, No water breaks for you. Get back to work and die of heat stroke. That's right, the famously anti Christian governor did Satan's work and signed a law that says businesses can keep workers from taking water breaks in scorching heat. You know who loves scorching heat with no water breaks? Satan, that's who! Ron DeSantis also signed a bill that requires K-12 students to learn about the evils of communism. Apparently, if students want to bring cupcakes for the whole class on their birthday, they're gonna have to start charging for them. Oklahoma Senator Dusty Devers has proposed a law that would make watching porn a federal offense and ban sexting between unmarried people. His reasons for this are simple. He watches a lot of porn and it just doesn't have that rush anymore, so he'd like to add a crime kink angle to the next time he wrangles his wangle. And the unwed sexting ban? That's just to get his many side pieces from church to stop hassling him all the time. I have to say, I think this law is brilliant. There he is sitting there going, hey, you know how we have this powder keg of white male rage that's ready to explode at any moment? What if we took away titties? You think we could take things up a notch? Flawless, no notes. If there's one thing billionaires hate, it's their employees working from home. The CEO of Nike said the reason why they've been having trouble innovating on new products is something about everybody being on Zoom. It's like, bro, you're rich, just pay for the version that's longer than 40 minutes. But one area where Nike has been able to innovate is the outfits for the Olympics. If you were hoping to see some Olympic-level crotch exposure, Nike has you uncovered with their Team USA Women's Track and Field Olympics kit. The women's kit promises to roll back gender equity at least 30 years and make gynecology exams possible from across the stadium. Good luck, ladies. Hope none of you are planning on having a period that month. Caitlin Clark has been drafted to play in the WNBA for Indiana. And this right here is my problem with sports. She worked hard. She had an amazing year. And now she has to go to Indiana? The state whose greatest export is a tie between Mike Pence and forcing elementary school kids to watch Hoosiers and PE while their coach gets called into the office for their third sexual misconduct complaint of the year? Let her pick where she wants to go. She earned it. Let's review all the ways that Tesla is screwed. The Cybertruck is behind schedule, just like everything else Elon touches. The company has lost hundreds of billions in value this year. And rather than giving employees vacations for working eight-hour weeks, Elon fired 10% of them. Now the billionaire wants a raise? You don't get a raise after you've burned the office down, bro. Also, why do you need a raise? You're the second richest guy in the world. What would you even do with more money? Bring back unicorns just so you can kill one? You're a ridiculous fucking person. More bad news for Boeing this week as a whistleblower claims that their planes can fall apart mid-flight. Airlines responded the way they always do, by hiking their baggage fees 15%. TCL just dropped a trailer for their new AI-generated short romance film about an automated robocall center. 
disillusioned with humanity after being yelled at and hung up on by every person it called, who returns home to a Midwest VPN for President's Day, meets an old 14.4 modem from its childhood, falls in love, and learns the true meaning of crass over-commercialization. It's titled, Skynet Falls in Love. Let's end things on an adorable note. A cat got rescued by some firefighters, but we're not sure if he wanted to be. Look at that face! He's so grumpy! Aw, that's how I feel when I watch the news too, little buddy. That wraps up this week's episode. Give us the old like and subscribe treatment and donate to help keep us going. Links in the description below. Love you! Bye!